But the first thing you need is you need a, you need a skill. You need a skill. And um, how many of us have picked the skill that we want to focus on, we want to build, we want to develop? Have you picked anyone you're interested in? Okay. Now you picked a skill now. And the next thing is, what, are you, what does it take to have that skill? If you're a content writer, it means that you need to start looking into how to write content that are suitable for the web, for the internet. Because it's not different from writing for a book, a hardcover book is different from writing for any online platform, be it social media, be it website or anything, be it article. So you have to find out how do I write a content that looks web friendly, that look website friendly. So as I'm as looking into that, the requirements of your skill, the demand of that skill, the next thing to do is to build your online profile. Now, I've heard so many persons say, um, I'm not a social media person. I'm not an online person. I'm not, see, if you, you have to, this is your age to get. This is your age, this is your time. And it's time for you to leverage on what is available in your time to do whatever you want to do. Because I remember when the internet came out, people tagged the internet. People tag the internet that it was evil, it was devilish, it was yada, yada, yada. But today, if you don't have an, an online presence, then your business is going to suffer because there's so many advantages to having an online presence. Of course, online, there are so many distractions, but you have to choose whether you're going online to learn, you're going online to make money, or you're going online to get distracted. I told someone that if I'm on Instagram, for example, I don't just watch um, go there and start checking up lifestyles and all of that. No, I go there to look at similar handles like mine, people that I want to learn from. Like I have a couple of coaches that I follow on Instagram and I look at how they do their stuff. I look at what I can adopt and what I can adapt. Do you get? So it's if um, your online profile is very important, whether you are a social media person or not, you need to optimize your online profile. And that starts with LinkedIn. Personally, I've, I've lost this for Facebook, really. I've lost it for Facebook, apart from my, my um, you know, resharing post and or my Facebook page, my business Facebook page, personally, because what I'm looking for is available on LinkedIn and probably uh, Twitter and Instagram. So I choose my platform. So you need to, what do I mean by, you know, your profile, online profile, your profile picture and your bio. If we do an analysis of some of your uh, online presence, it's uh, like what to describe, how you describe yourself on your profile. So it might not pass 50%, 50% rating. Why some of them might actually try so first thing first is you need a professional picture, profile picture. And it doesn't, I don't know how much it costs there to snap a picture at the studio, go to the studio and snap a good picture. I think beds are like a good time to go to the studio and snap a good picture because it's very, that's like your brand. But this time around, you are projecting yourself as a brand. You are now a brand. You are, your own, you are a company, you are your own business. You are like, you are marketing yourself. And it starts with the picture you present on your profile, uh, profile, profile part of your handles. And you need a LinkedIn account. I'm telling you that there are so many chances, so many opportunities on LinkedIn, more than you can ever know. Like LinkedIn is one place that you can get a job without even applying via the website. And how do you do that? How do you do that? Like we first of all start with your, uh, I think I have a video on my, I, I did a video recently on the things you need to optimize on your LinkedIn account to get it up to top, like up to a level whereby you can be seen by potential recruiters, people that are looking for a particular skill set. And you can also check my own personal handle. It's not up to 100% yet as I would want it, but you can look at it also to, uh, 
to guide you. If you're looking for a sample, you can look at my own LinkedIn handle to guide you on how to update yours. So your picture, profile picture, your name. This is the time you, you, you choose a name that is that you want to be known for or known with, like your real name. Your real name, like if it's your first name and your last name, a no, because your name is also your brand. Don't have the same name across all your platforms. This is very important. Why? It increases your ability to be found online. If we have Austin Okocha on, um, I'm using as an example, on LinkedIn, and then you now have Austin Baba on um, Facebook, and you now have Austin White on Instagram, you now have Austin Levels on Twitter. You know, there's going to be a clash. It's going to reduce your ability to be found because the search engine will see those things like there are four different persons. So use one name across your platforms. You can focus only on and build your LinkedIn account. That's fine. You can focus and build your LinkedIn account. That's very fine. So build your LinkedIn account, your bio, like a place for you to just look at my own handle and then model it, model what's already there. So you start using, describing yourself the way with the skills that you want to do, you want to apply, you want to be known for. The next thing is your perfect introduction. I told Jennifer to share a, a perfect introduction with you guys. She, uh, I believe she did, right? Did she explain? Okay. Okay, yeah. So your perfect introduction is the next thing. You need to get you ready. It will help you to be ready. You know, you know when you go for an event or you're writing a book or you're collaborating, they'll ask you to send in a bio. So you don't have to start looking for a way to start crafting a bio immediately. You just simply go to your perfect introduction. If, you, if it's a summary, you summarize it. If you just spot having a perfect introduction on standby helps you to immediately introduce yourself on anywhere or update any handle. So make sure that what you can do, what you are doing already is reflecting on your LinkedIn account. Excuse me, for example, content writing. Make sure on your bio, on your profile on LinkedIn, reflects content writing and your interests. I mentioned some areas yesterday. If you're going to work in a crypto job space, it has to be obvious on your LinkedIn profile that this is where you are interested in. Like you're interested in uh, Web3, you're interested in gaming because these people will be looking for, type go to LinkedIn and search content writer, gaming content writer. Your name will come up in search just because you, you added content writer and gaming on your profile. Are you guys following me? So you arrange it that way, you arrange it that way. Then you get to there's different places, you, uh, other parts of your LinkedIn account you can update and then your profile introduction to, you set it up. So next thing is you join relevant communities. What will joining relevant communities help you do? There are so many things, there's so many uh, jobs you can get so many job roles you can actually get without applying directly to a website. And that is the advantage of joining relevant communities. For example, now, how many of you know what is called uh, the social media community platform called Discord? Have you ever heard about Discord? Okay, 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 that's a good one. That's a good one. Now there's a community on Discord that has their focus on jobs, sharing job opportunities. If you join there, you have budgets to chat with people that are like you. You can ask questions. How do I get jobs as a content writer? Why would you really want to get jobs as a content writer? You see this, I'm talking about introduction now. There's a section in that, in their server that has to do with introduction. Everyone comes in there, you write your introduction. Is there a place for just ordinary chit chat, you're there to network. You know, I've ever heard of a saying that says, um, your network is equals to your net worth. 
the, your immediate as the immediate if you want something if you want something you need to be around people who can have access to that thing because you are five persons away from the thing you're looking for so if you join in a community that can actually that have comprises of different persons different personalities and different exposures you will learn a lot in a very short time you can ask questions and you can get answers now there are some other communities on telegram whereby you join this community all they do there is there's nothing like there's no room for chit chat is people that are looking for people um, uh, looking for a particular skill and then people that are applying for your skill so they come in and say i'm looking for a content writer that is focused on metaverse then you you join in and, and post your handles your, your imperfect introduction and then you write you're interested in this thing because you can't just say i'm interested in writing in a writing job they need to know okay so that's what your perfect introduction does you come into the group you announce yourself my name is this this is what i can do this is what i can do i'm interested in this i'm interested in that these are my uh, uh, strengths these are my strengths these are the experiences i have so far i have samples of content around this area around this area, around this area and then you put that into that place somebody is watching most likely you get a DM as that says, okay, you say you're a writer, we're looking for a writer into this. Can you send me a sample of a content to Britain? And then from there, you send an example or they'll give you a topic to work on. So now you join relevant communities. There are communities on LinkedIn too. There are groups on LinkedIn you can also join. One of the, that, um, that content writing this I told you guys yesterday that I got was from, I found out that I share a common community, a group with the, with the lady on LinkedIn. I'm in a group. So you can look for groups that are in the same area as you are interested in. For example, now gaming now. You look for groups on gaming on LinkedIn and join in. Especially those groups with a large number of persons and look at the profiles of one person, they're like top notch. You join those communities. Most likely, when a company is looking for, is looking for someone. Sometimes you might post it on this popular website too, for, um, to get, for people to apply. But sometimes it's easier to search in groups. You find someone, you send them an, an immediate DM already, and then you get them to do a sample, or you get to talk, to talk with them, fix an interview, and then you are done. You've chosen your listen. All the, then all the people that apply through website now, they've missed out. I'm telling you this thing because I've been, I've been um, one of my previous workplaces. I was I, I was given a task to help find someone uh, from, but not from Africa, but from uh, I think Asia Asia region because Asia region and I think uh, uh, um, what they call uh, EMEA that's Middle East Europe Middle East Middle East. You were looking for a particular skill around that area, and one of the places that we had to look at was groups. Excuse me, where they post, where people come to post their, um, what they can do. So those uh, committees are very important. Now, how do you get the experience? How do you, you know, at this point now, most of these that we are saying are very new to you. You've not really done them. How do you get the experience for, that you can use to you know, or you can get bolder? Because the more you expose yourself to this thing, the bolder you become. How do you get that experience? You can start as an intern. There are so many internship opportunities out there. There are so many ambassadorship opportunities out there. I mentioned yesterday that as an intern, you have the chance to get into a job role without experience. But by the time you are done with that internship role, you will have gained relevant experience like can post anywhere, your LinkedIn handle, your resume and all. So like, if you're looking for, if it's someone that you think that maybe you have a certification, a Google certification on, on digital marketing, mind you, marketing is one, is one top role that is very result oriented. Now, as a content writer, you can write a content, you can write content, which just article for the company's website or blog, and you might not really bother about um, uh, the end result at the end of the day. But as a digital marketer, you are expected to find out to initiate actions that can either increase the brand awareness of that brand, of that company or 
help them bring um, look for your target audience. So if you if you go to a digital if you, if you've learned about digital marketing but you've never really applied it, the best thing to do is to enter as an intern or look for an entry job for that role. Don't just ask, don't, don't just go and say, oh, I'm a digital marketer or I apply for a digital marketing role because most likely these people will be looking for someone with that experience, at least three years, three years experience. And right now you don't have three years experience. So you enter as an intern. Another most beautiful way to gain the experience you need, to get the exposure you need to, that will expose you to strong network is ambassadorship. One of the ways that this project used to you know, penetrate different communities is by setting up ambassadorship program. And they usually come with uh, incentives. So ambassadorship program, they pay you in their tokens. Like you know now crypto deals with a lot of tokens, their own coins. So their own coins and then uh, maybe uh, dollar equivalent of their own coins. So ambassador, as an ambassador, as an ambassador, you will have the opportunity to have a hands-on experience. Uh, okay, if you can still hear me, raise up your hand. Okay, all right. You have the opportunity to have hands-on experience to in managing communities, for example, because as an ambassador, you are ex you, you you have a task to get in. Maybe you are in you are in Nigeria now. You're in Nigeria now, and the project is from Germany, for example. And they're looking for a way to get in, get um, the Nigerian community on board. What they will do is that they will look for ambassadors around Nigeria. Now you have to you be tasked with creating a group and bringing your fellow people. Maybe you're a student, for example. You bring in your stu fellow students into the um, the community and um, the two kinds of community that they use in the crypto space is Telegram and Discord. They don't really use WhatsApp, but Telegram and Discord. You don't bring in your fellow students, use your influence and bring in people into the community. So as an ambassador, you will learn how to be a community manager. You will learn how to be a content writer. Like you literally do a lot of things. So an ambassadorship role exposes you to a lot and there is no demand. There is no experience demand. Like there is no um, demand on how many years have you, how many years of space do you have, do you have like this, in that particular skill or in this space. So looking for an easy way to get in and get that experience you're looking for, go in as intern, look for internship roles and look for ambassadorship roles you will get exactly what you're looking for. But then, I've already mentioned network. You get network by attending events. There are so many crypto events, virtual events online. Like, I want about virtual events is that you can listen to it from anywhere. And you have the chance of networking with people. There, you have chance of networking with people. On LinkedIn itself, there are you see a part of LinkedIn that has to do with events. You find out which events you can join in. You will learn a lot. Remember, the more you get exposed to these things, the easier they, they, be, they start sounding. They start sounding like, oh, this is something I know. And when you have questions, I go back to Google to ask a question, or you go back to YouTube to ask a question. It, it, it becomes more clearer. And at this point, I want to encourage you to always leverage your search engines. Sometimes the questions you're looking for are just there on Google. Now, the essence of having a tutor that you can ask a question is that the person will explain from the place of experience and break it down for you simply and easily. But a very good place to start asking your questions is Google. When you hit something, like personally, one of the things that help me is that sometimes I don't need to admit that I've never done that thing. I'll just bite by myself time and can Google it and see if something I can learn how to do sharp sharp. It gives me opportunity to get experience. I don't like saying I don't know how to do it. I don't like saying I don't know how to do it. Instead, I prefer to say I can learn how to do it. 
unless it's not in the list of things that I want to, in the area that I want to channel myself into. So never use the word, I don't know how to. Use, I can learn. If you say I can learn, for example now, um, job bros actually give you the opportunity to, to learn on the job. Like now, if you apply for a job role and you happen to get the, uh, what do you call it? You happen to get a chance for an interview and they find out that you don't have as much experience as they're looking for, you can tell them to give you one month trial period. But usually that one month trial period comes to pay. If they're supposed to pay like $100 for that one month, they'll pay $50 for your time. So what would, what would you gain with that one month? Even if they don't eventually keep you beyond one month, that one month is like a probation period. You will get one month experience. You can't be the same after that one month. You will get bolder, you will get exposure to be able to apply for the next job. So what I'm trying to emphasize is you grab every opportunity you get. So next one is, um, when you apply on websites, let's go to let's go to the websites right now. When you apply on websites, don't just sit down and wait. Do you get me? For example, on the website now, you will see. Let me let me let me open it from my end here, so I can I can use it for I'm the, I can use it to explain to you. Um, let me use Web three website. Okay, for example, now I'm looking at um, on the Web3, that web three, that website I told you guys to check out. I'm looking at a graphic designer job and they're looking for someone who has four plus in years work experience in design related field proficiency and applying principles of graphic, that's color, grid, hierarchy, and all of them, all of them, all of them. Um, okay, these are, these are the demand, but I'm going to use it for an as an example. Um, Now, what is required here is that you attach your name, your last name, your email address, and your resume and your cover letter, your LinkedIn profile, if you have one, and the website, if you have one. So after you've done this, after you've applied via the website, next thing to do is to Look for that name of that company on LinkedIn. I wish you guys had seen my laptop chat, but then I'll be explaining it uh, verbally. Now let's let me. You go to LinkedIn and look for the company. Now this company is existing on LinkedIn. You open the company. Now every. Companies that are listed on LinkedIn, their pages are on LinkedIn. Yeah? They make sure that their staff add their job roles to their LinkedIn profile. This thing gives even more presence to the company. Are you guys following me? Is it sounding very confusing? Yes. If it's confusing, raise up your hand. If it's not confusing, uh, give me a thumbs up. It's confusing you. Uh, if it's not confusing, if it's not confusing, if it's not confusing, you just raise up your hand. Oh, it's confusing. Okay, All right. All right. Um, okay. I'll make it more simpler. Let me continue from the website. On the website. That website, for example, you want to apply via website. I've explained uh, you going via communities, that's job focus communities. They have them on LinkedIn, they have them on uh, Telegram, and they have them on Discord. When you join those communities, this is where that introduction I talked about to come in. You place that introduction and indicate you're looking for social and social job. Usually, if it's on Discord, they have what they call a channel where they post opportunities. 
Now, what if you apply on, on websites? How do you ensure that you're taken or, you know, they, they pick you? I heard if you're applying on the website, yeah, those web, two websites I mentioned, you look for that company that you applied to on LinkedIn. Look for them on LinkedIn. Then on their bio, on the profile part of their of the company's account on LinkedIn, you will see see all employees. You will see see all employees. I'm recording this session, so I'm going to I'm going to actually release the I'm really, I'm going to release the two of the yesterday's class and today's class to Mr. Manuel. So you guys can watch it. I'll just up, I'll upload it to my YouTube. So if you want to rewatch it again and maybe be able to get your questions and all, it might help you to watch it over again. So I'm recording the session. Um, you will see a part on the profile employees on LinkedIn. When you click on it, you will see everyone that is in the company from CEO to anybody in the company. I saw the person added their name. So what you should do is, the company you're looking for, the, the, the job role you're looking for now, for example, now, this job role now is a, is a uh, yeah, graphic designer job role. And you look for the office that is most likely going to employ that job role. Sometimes it's usually the office of um, the COO, chief of operations, the chief of operations or the person in charge of, um, uh, I think, person in charge of maybe growth, person in charge of growth, charge of operations, or they might have a lead designer. If they already have a lead designer, most likely that person will be in charge of employing graphic designers that work under him. So you look for office that is directly above that one you're looking for, and you chat the person up. One second, please, just one second. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. All right, okay. And then you, you send the person a DM, a, a message saying that you are interested in their social and so job role, graphic designer job role, and you are a graphic designer who creates designs around Web3, Metaverse, gaming, and all of that. And you are interested, of course, before then, you, sh you should have read about the company. Before you apply for any job role, or if you have the chance of, uh, you can apply actually and go and read about the company later. If you get a chance of interview, make sure you read about the company. See, remember what I said yesterday about results. People are employing you for the results you can deliver. So you should have looked at the company and find out why would, ask yourself, why would this company be looking for so and so job role? For example, like a graphic designer, you check out their handles. Because if you go to their website, for example, the website at the, at the uh, lower end of the website, you will see their social media handles. You go to it and find out, okay, is there the graphics? How can the graphics be better? I'm using graphic designer as an example now. How, what can you bring that can make the graphic better? These are the things that you come with at the interview point. And if you're sending a personal DM, these are the things you present that yo, you've checked, you've checked out their um, website and you find that they're in need of graphic design. This is what, this is what. You just point out one or two things. Of course, you don't give them all the things that they can improve on. But these are the things that you are bringing to the table that can make the web, their website better or their designs better since it's graphic design role. And if you have a, if you had experience, if you have a place that you get all your samples, as a graphic design a designer, you should have samples of the designs you've done before. As a graphic designer, you should have samples. Now, 
I will touch, I will touch about experiences very soon. So after you've um, chatted the person up, sending this thing I've, I've said so far, you now submit it and then wait for the person's reply. Most likely, this, is, this person is, a, is, a, is an official person, is a, is a work person. So most definitely they'll respond to their, their, their DM on LinkedIn. So they'll respond to you and tell you, okay, oh, I'm sorry, you know, and or they tell you, I'm not, we're not employing. Don't just don't send this DM to the CEO or this thing. Or you can initiate a conversation. Hi, I noticed that you're interested in gaming and metaverse and all of that. I just want to connect officially with you. And oh, a person like, oh wow, nice meeting you. You can initiate one or two conversations before you dive in. Maybe do it the first day, you the person will respond, second day, maybe by third day, you're not telling the person, okay. Um, you're yeah, interested in this and so job role, just in case there's anyone available at where the person is working or the person has no someone and all. The person says, okay, 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 I'll pay attention. When you're doing it, you're saving them the stress of looking for somebody that can do that job role because looking for someone can be stressful, even though it's easy. I don't know, so they can just easily set up an interview for you there. Imagine when you have an interview, they'll just ask you, can you make a design like this? Or can I see what you've done before? Is it making sense? Is it making any sense? Is it making any sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um you can also do the same for their telegram. Now I've had the last two interviews I had, not the one I told about, was via telegram. Now this telegram handle that posts job roles. Job opportunities and some job roles have a name you can simply mes message on telegram so when you you can also find out if if it's possible to get uh this uh, their their telegram handle or if you join a committee like that and you get a name of from the company what you should do you dm them and do the same thing that you would have done on linkedin the person comes and responds People respond to, respond to their DM. They won't really want to come to their DM. On Telegram, for example, they won't go come and DM you because people that DM other people are usually seen as scammers. But you that are looking for the job rule can DM them. But people from, people from the company cannot DM them. They will tell you to DM them. Am I making sense? Yes, ma'am. So, another thing you should also do I mentioned yesterday is um, self improvement based on trend. For example, now before I think I, I think it was twenty twenty that I, I I created a couple of uh, contents around gaming, but it wasn't a serious thing around that time. It wasn't really a serious thing. It was mostly DeFi. It was mostly DeFi. And but now that we are seriously into gaming, you have to learn to. Prepare yourself and get yourself ready for any for the trend, for any shift that happens in the crypto space. But you have to have the basic skill first. If you have the basic skill of writing, then you keep updating your portfolio of different areas in crypto space. Like what I told the class I held in December is, I mentioned the areas that are current trend. If you're a writer, write at least one content in each of these areas one on Metaverse, one on gaming, one on NFT, one on DAO, you know, one on Web3. And just be ready. Because you can't can apply for a job you're not ready for. Or you don't even know how to be in that role. That's the essence of the sample. So if you use one month and prepare yourself, you might not even need one month, self. So the promise don't even need one month to prepare themselves. So you just get to work and update your profiles, and prepare your portfolio. How do you now get, um, what if you don't have an experience, you want to do community management, for example, how do you get the experience? Now there are, okay. There are several, sorry, I'm sick. Sick. 
Okay, um, sorry for that break, just be short. Um, there are several ways for you to actually gain the experience without actually gaining the experience, the official experience. For example, remember what I mentioned about getting uh, looking for internship roles. Before you can get an internship role, you can, really, you can apply for. There are person people around you. You can maybe you have friends that have businesses. You can start practicing with your community. First thing first is find out what does it take. What are the things? What are the demands of a community manager? You look for someone who have um, maybe you have a friend who has a business. On the name of that business, you can create a community and start applying what you've been learning about community management. This way, you are knowing what is working and what is not working. For real. Because it's one to read about stuff, it's another to apply them to see what is working or what could actually work for you. So you can leverage on your friends who have businesses to start practicing social media management and community management. That is one way to get experience before you start applying for roles. So you can't bank on something. If you say you are a community manager, you are actually say that you've actually gained had an experience as a freelancer. Now your resume now, you can easily apply for a role with experience as like intern and as a freelance role. Now, that, how do you get internship experience? You helped your friend build his community. Um, I think I will do that video. There's a video I also, I also did on writing resumes. I did it also on my YouTube channel too. But I think I might have to redo the video because uh, I don't know if it was that clear, but you can also check it out on how to build your resume too, especially uh, if it is crypto specific. But you need at least two experiences on your resume and you can easily use the freelance one and put in and then use your intern. And all these things you can gain them by helping your friend do their community. That's how you can build your portfolio around community management. And you can also get some training. Like on LinkedIn now, they offer different skill assessments. They have uh, places you can take courses on. And then um, the skills that you can easily get is what we call, uh, you can easily get community management roles. You can easily get, um, this is what they call shilling. You can easily get a shilling job, but I prefer to call it a growth marketing job. You can easily get it because there are they always they need more hands for those kind of roles. Another thing you can also do is to start creating a track record of your knowledge on social media. For example, if you're interested in writing, you can start showing what you learn, what you know around crypto by creating always creating content around crypto, especially the trend we are in on your LinkedIn handle. LinkedIn is one of the biggest, it's one of the places you can be seen. If you write every day on LinkedIn, you will definitely be seen and you'll bring your engagement to your handle. And every day, try to follow, if you're new to LinkedIn, try to follow at least 20 persons every day. 20 persons every day, 20 persons every day. Follow other people in the area. How would you know who to follow? Type Web3 into, for example, I type Web3 into LinkedIn. You'll see names of people that are in, into Web3 and you follow them. Follow them, most likely some of them will follow you back. So if you, if you follow 20 persons every day and then you engage on their content, like for example, now somebody, one of those people in Web3 now posted something about what's happening in Web3. You like it and you leave a reasonable comment. It could be a question. It's possible that you, you didn't understand what the person wrote and you, you ask for clarity. Those things are building you up and projecting you further. These are like organic ways to, to bring, build yourself online. Next thing is volunteer. Always volunteer. Learn how to volunteer. 
Can I help you do this? Can I help manage your account? Can I help? Can I help? Now, volunteering was one of the ways that I remember one of um, the first content writing stuff I did. I was never paid for it, but it gave me the experience I wanted. I can easily say, oh, I had, I had an ex experience. I wrote for this magazine on so and so time, so and so time. Nobody needs to know that they didn't pay me. So you can volunteer. That's one way to get the experience you're looking for. You can volunteer. And I'm telling you, if you volunteer in, at, a, at a place, most likely they will keep you. And most likely they will recommend some, somebody else if you did it with all your heart. Um, you can also join projects. For example, most crypto projects have what we call have Discord servers. Discord server. So you can find their Discord server at the, at the lower end of their website. And, you know, you join a Discord server and you find out if they have a place. Some websites even have where they wrote career, high, uh, career paths or jobs. They either call it career on their website or they call it jobs. These are places where they post available openings on their stuff, on their uh, company. Now, Another one to a way to get a job is to type hiring. Hope I'm not boring you guys. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Before I say the last thing I wanted to say, I want to say about how to apply for these jobs. See, yeah, if you don't, if you don't do any of this that I'm saying, you will not get the result. There's never a uh, a fast and hard, a fast, a fast route to these things. Now, one, one of the things I said now could actually be the only answer. So people will try one, two, three of the things I've said and it's work for them. Some people will try only one and to work for them. But I'm showing you all the possible options on how to get this thing. So before I say, so, so far, so good. Let me know if you've been following. What are, just give me two ways that, give me two ways to apply for a crypto job or to prepare yourself to 